The year 2008 was a year that sparked a journey towards active involvement of SADC member states in gender parity. It all began with SADC head of states agreeing to sign and adopt the SADC protocol on gender and development, which had 28 targets. With every great initiative, challenges are bound to present themselves, and that can be seen within the SADC gender and development protocol in Botswana, with the government adamant on desisting from signing the protocol for the past seven years. Vice President of the Republic of Botswana, Mokwezi Masisi, who was in attendance at the 2015 Regional Summit, shed a bit of light on why the government comes off as reluctant to sign the policy and how a constructive way forward can be mapped out. Noting that though Botswana has not signed, it is very active in pushing for gender equality in the country, proving that the fact that the government is not signing does not necessarily mean that they are against the mandate. As a founding member, I am happy to inform you that Botswana is committed to the SADC principles. Committed. This is recognized by its participation in the very formulation of the SADC protocol on gender and development until its conclusion. <coughs> Allow me to state that during the formulation of the protocol, Botswana indicated its reservations regarding unrealistic or what it perceived to be unrealistic targets and time frames. Some of the measures and serious resource implications that as a country who takes their financial behavior seriously, we could not guarantee. Other issues which we objected to include the use of compelling language, as well as lack of reservation, a reservation clause, which could at least allow Botswana to sign and reserve provisions where we have issues. In that regard, Botswana was not in a position to sign the SEREC protocol on gender and development. Marele Lisogoto, assistant representative of the UNFPA, also took time to share her perspective, explaining that the country is doing a tremendous job in its commitment to the advancement of women socio-economically despite reservations expressed. We would like the country to sign, but we, we also know that the, the, the government is, is committed to the principles of the SADC gender protocol. If you look at statistics, uh, Botswana is doing much, much better, as they always say, even much better than some countries who have signed the protocol. Mm -hmm. So why will we continue to advocate for them to sign? We'll also be keeping our eye on what they are doing, because access to these services, what the government does, how the women are viewed in front of the law as uh, opposed to, to men, that is important to us. And I think that's where the government's uh, main priorities are. Civil society representatives, on the other hand, also express views on the need for the Botswana government to be transparent in the review process in order to strengthen ties. We are very pleased for the president to have made such a commitment. But the issue at hand here is, how does the, the, the nation, I mean, how do they make, how does our government make this kind of commitment? when they know they have not signed and how are they going to be inclusive in the process in the review process that's the one we are talking about so that they can they could be able to put in the um the clause and other issues which they feel are mandatory like the language which they feel is mandatory how we, we don't know as civil society, we would actually want to know exactly how they are going to be part of the review process. 2015 is a landmark year for the Southern African Development Community as the SADC Gender Protocol aligned to the Millennium Development Goals expires this year. It is with no doubt that indeed 2015 is the year of gender, but even beyond this year, the hope is that all SADC member states will bring forth their full support towards gender parity. This is Carol Komoso for Gender Links News Service, Khaboroni.